I'm going to show you right now two very easy tools that you can be using to understand your own home's need for makeup hair. Or if you're a professional like me and you're working consulting for people like that, I, I, these are tools that honestly I use on basically every single consult that I have done in the last two years. Um, they are amazing. They will help to tell the story to people. And so um, what we're going to do is go through uh, two different websites. One of them is called Red Calc. This stands for Residential Energy Dynamics. This is a free tool. You go to the main page and you can go down and uh, try out the, the free. You can try the free as many times as you want. If you're a pro and you run a giant organization and you want to be able to brand the reports that it's going to pump out, then you can absolutely, uh, there are better versions that they would be happy to work with you on. But what this website is amazing at is that it will give you calculations and the information that is a little bit weird and hard to figure out on paper. And by the way, being able to do math on a sheet of paper is a very important skill, so don't skip that part. But this is going to be a lot faster than that. So you can obviously do ventilation sizing, which is very important because you want to get that ASHRAE 62 to how many CFM does my home need in order to stay well ventilated. I won't say healthy uh, because who knows what that is. That's dependent on your, your behavior. But uh, you want that number because you're going to aim at that number and you want to be able to turn your ventilation up and down from there. So that's just a guideline. That's all. You can do all kinds of kooky stuff with this uh, website. It's a pretty amazing. All I'm going to show you right now is this depressurization analysis right here. So if we were to take this house, for example, let's say that this home is being built um, and new construction, you're going to have to need makeup air because we are going to have a kitchen exhaust hood in new construction and it has to go outside because it's the only way to do this right. By the way, if you're a passive house person and you want to pick a fight with me about like having a recirculating kitchen exhaust hood and then an ERV exhaust port somewhere in the kitchen, I'm happy to have that argument. I think that's a terrible idea. Uh, so an exhaust hood over your kitchen cooking surfaces that goes directly outside, super important. Let's imagine that this home needs to meet code in New York. And New York, I believe right now, is at three air changes per hour at 50. That means that when you do a blow order test on this house, it's going to need to be exchanging its air less than or equal to three times an hour during that test. Uh, that means that we're going to have to calculate the ventilation for this. And by the way, these are, I'm not showing you math just for the sake of math. I'm showing you this because you're going to need these numbers in order to move forward with these calculations. So on this floor, this is 1960 square feet total in this house. We've got 7,800 square feet on the top floor. And because of a fireplace and a little bit of weird geometry on the bottom floor, we got 7,832 square feet, excuse me, cubic feet on both of those. So the cubic footage, uh, on this house is 15,632. That's how much air there is contained within the shell of the house. And if you use this very simple uh, lower door equation to target what your CFM 50 should be at the end when you're done building this house, or if it's a, an improvement project and you're spray foaming the entire house and a, a renovation, for example, this would also apply. We can figure out easily that for 15,632 cubic feet of air, your blower door test, if it's the tightness level that we're looking at, which again is three air changes per hour 50, is 781.6. Now just to, if, you, if you're if you like, oh, I don't think that our house is going to be that tight. The house that I built with my parents, who none of us are home builders, is 0 0.4 air changes per hour at 50. The pressure imbalances in this house are freaky crazy, but in a normal house that's going to hit three because they're using something like uh, you know, weather resistant barrier, like a WRB sheathing or air tightness measures, or they're even going to be paying attention to air tightness at all, or using spray foam, all that is going to, is going to matter here. And it's going to count towards your air tightness, which is going to really screw up your pressure, which is why we bring them back to makeup air. If you go down into this depressurization analysis, what you will see is we have our building leakage, which I just put in that 781.6 CFM 50, which is 782. For an exhaust flow, for a kitchen hood that we're going to be installing that's 400 CFM, let's just say, because that's a pretty round number for a kitchen exhaust hood, the depressurization that will happen when I turn on that hood in this house is that I'm going to depressurize it to almost 19 pascals. That is a lot. 
that's almost a tenth of an inch of water column, which is what is, exists inside of your ductwork if you've got a central air handler. Um, that is not good for many reasons, one of which, uh, which we don't even need to go down the list past this, is moisture. You're going to be importing humidity from outside uh, or dryness, and that will lead to mold growth and microbial uh, accelerations. And also in the wintertime, then you'd have cracking of the, of the wood uh, floors, which I have personally experienced when I have done this uh, without makeup air in this house that I'm talking to you from. So both of those things are bad. At this point, we have talked our client into makeup air. It's that easy, right? Now, there are several solutions to this. One of them is, well, code requires that we have makeup air at 400 CFM uh, for a kitchen exhaust hood. Why don't we just go 300 CFM? And an engineer will absolutely recommend that to you. Here is what happens if we down this to 300 CFM instead. Now you're depressurizing the house to 12 pascals. Just because code says something is good doesn't mean that it's that is actually good. All they're trying to do is black and white, is it safe for human habitation? And they have frankly no idea how healthy homes work. So 12 pascals is also a terrible number to have your home be at a consistent rate because you're using your kitchen exhaust because you're a good person, you're trying to protect your kids. You're going to be, again, importing that moisture and having air quality problems, and you're going to be causing kind of just general not good stuff in the house. So just downsizing the kitchen exhaust hood is absolutely not the solution for you. Um, here is what is more likely is that the whoever is designing the kitchen is going to say, we would need a six burner gas stove in here because the uh, whoever is the cook in the house has taken chef lessons and they, they are really serious about their cooking. If you put in an 800 CFM exhaust hood, that's going to be more than the blower door test for this house is. So when you use that, you will be doing a blower door test. Now we're talking. So now Let's figure out what the other solution is, aside from just downsizing or trying to, trying to cheat uh, with this. You're going to go with first, most inexpensive option, is passive makeup air. And for this calculation, we're going to go to the Brone uh, site, which is brone.com or bronenewtone.com. And you click on the menu and go down to specifier tools, right down here. You can also just Google Brone makeup air calculator. Um, I've been using this thing for years, and it's uh, great. Right here, range hood makeup air damper specifier. So now we're going to size a passive makeup air system. We need to tell them where we are in the country. So I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. That's in Fulton County. And by the way, so I'm going to show you the, um, we'll go 800 real quick. I'm not going to interlock this with the air handler. That's a topic for my full ventilation course, which is like a half day course. That's going to be online. If you want more ventilation information, you need to go take that course. Um, but for, for right now, let's just say that we're um, going with this 800 CFM air handler. And by the way, the simplified is kind of a dumb way to do it. I always like to go a little bit above and beyond anybody else. So I'm going to go detailed and you get these extra things that you're going to do. So for an 800 CFM exhaust hood, we're going to use 10 inch round duct. That'll give us with almost no elbows at all. If you mount this thing on an exterior wall and you go straight out through the wall, then you get about 760 CFM of flow. And then we want to know what the depressurization limit that we want this house to actually experience is. I don't want my homes that I'm consulting on generally to go any more south than five pascals. That's enough so that you could feel it on your hand. If you cracked open a door, you would feel air coming in, but it's not gonna be, it, it hopefully will be mitigated enough by the fact that it's spread over the entire house that it's not going to cause major problems for long. You can down this to three pascals or two pascals or zero pascals, but I will show you, <laughs> Let's, before we go crazy with that, you should go crazy with that. Here's what I want to show you. 15 is way too high, as we've already discussed. 50 is the blow order test. That's what we're already at. So if we want to keep this to five pascals max, the area within the pressure boundary is 1960. We're going to round to 1950. Average ceiling height is eight. 
uh, unit leakage to outside is 3.0 air changes per hour. And then it's asking us what, what is the makeup error um, ductwork made of. You click on find MUA solution. And, and by the way, it's going to ask you in a screen before this to give all of your contact information. You can just skip that screen if you want to. It's not a problem. And they will tell you that you are going to need five eight inch ducts to outside, each of which that has a damper on it. And at this point, you're telling someone that they're going to need five holes in their house, all in generally the same area, to be able to bring in enough air to keep the depressurization low enough that it's not going to hurt the house. Or you could put, let's see, three 10 inch holes. I would bet that either of those is totally out of the question for most people. Now, we've come to the point where it's like, okay, what is the solution now? You can do it with five holes in your house, which most people are going to be like, heck no, I'm not doing that. What else can we do? Well, what else you can do is active makeup air, which is what I have installed in our house, which is a bit more complicated of a system. It has a fan that turns on when the exhaust fan turns on so that every CFM that's blown out by the exhaust hood comes in with an actual fan. That's one hole in the house instead of th three or five. Um, and so it's more expensive, yes. It's going to draw energy, yes, but it keeps this pressure imbalance under control. So if you want to know more about this, again, I have a ventilation course that's going to be uh, coming online very soon. Um, I'm linking to it now if it's already published. But please do make sure that you keep your head on straight about how the metrics should work and telling the story to yourself, to your family, who is going to help pay for all this stuff, to your clients if you're a professional, um, and make sure that you're planning for all of the invisible dynamics that are going to be going on in a home that you're building new or one that you're improving that's older. Thank you very much for watching. If you have questions or comments, please do add them below. I address them personally. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time.